something different today, y'all. Got my guy RC, man. He's interviewing me today. Yo, yo. We're going gonna to let you guys know what Game 365 is all about. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, man, what's, what's popping, man? How are you, first of all? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. Blessed. You know, the rain, you know, it's a little bit, you know how the rain gets in Seattle and shit where motherfucker got to drive a little bit more leery and oh, shit. Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's good money, though, bro. Hey, look, man, when, the, when it started raining, man, the average cat can't handle that, man. We, <laughs> but we still be out here. You're yeah. like, man, no, nah, it's time to go. You know what I'm saying? It's, man, it's, it's rainy day hustle I'm all day. I'm trying to tell you, man, I've been doing it all my life. So, I mean, it's just a part of it. You got to adapt. Dig it. You got to adapt, bro. Dig it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I know you're trying to do something different today, man. I'm a, you know, I'm a let your uh your audience uh get to know you a little bit appreciate that you know what i'm saying because uh you know i mean game game three six five man like you know it's not just like a you know a number and some some letters man there's it's some real shit behind that yeah yeah actually factually <laughs> dig it let's uh let's let, let, let's talk about your humble beginnings let's talk about a uh, little little t hill and, and where he came from where he grew up at yeah man i'm from seattle washington yeah you know, the Central District to be exact. Oh, boy. You know, I come up around Jackson and, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, and Dearborn. Okay. You know, the CD, the heart of the CD. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The Black Panthers, Hustlers, Players, Pimps. Real talk. Yes, Sir. You know, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, 304, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, Third and Pine, you know, downtown Seattle, you For know? Sure. Yeah, all the way around that motherfucker. That man said Third and Pine. I mean, I came up around all that, bro. The two story McDonald's. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, nigga, remember niggas used to be at the bank across the street, Kitty Corner? <laughs> yes, I do. Like, yeah, all you niggas is not bankers. This is not Wall Street, nigga. What you niggas is doing? I'm trying to get my money, man. I mean, so when you say that, like, so were, were you were you in the street early? I was in the street probably sixth grade. Word. So you yeah. like you kind of grew up on the street. Yeah, I grew up in the streets. You know, I'm from the game, born and raised in the game. Right, right. Uh, family in the streets. Mm-hmm. But family, you know, had an entrepreneur background. Oh, know? I see. Yeah, my grandfather had a store in the uh -huh, city, uh -huh. taverns, you know, after hours and shit. Mr. Randolph, Word. you know, had one of the uh, candy stores in the hood. It was the pink oh, store. Shit. Okay. Every old school CD motherfuckers, parents and grandparents wow. know, you know, about about uh, Mr. Randolph's store. That was my grandfather. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, so you, so your family's part of that that black renaissance that hit the CD hard, you know, some of the first black families to even come to the Central District. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah most definitely. Uh, definitely, yeah. you know, that when they, you know, when Jordans and Richlands. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, yeah. uh, Collins Gold. Yeah, Thompson's. And, and Thompson's. On and, that, there's a bank right next to Thompson's that was a black yeah. bank, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, that got yeah. started way back in the, the 30s or 40s. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. You know, Hill, Hills Brothers Barbecue. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, a yeah. lot of old school flavor, man, yeah. in that town. Oscars and Dinos. Oscars always. and Dinos. <laughs> Richlands. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yes. Yeah, man. That, man, you taking me back, man. Yeah, man. Because now it's like, man, you look at that, you look at that intersection and it's just like, it looked like Times Square or something. Like. <laughs> You know, they changed it. I'm trying to tell you, man, it's a whole new world. You yeah, know? man. Yeah, man. Wow. Okay, so uh so so you saying you basically grew up on the street now, uh um what what was it what was it like? I mean, sixth grade, bro, you was what, uh Eight, nine? Nah, hell no. <laughs> Wait, nah, sixth grade. Nah, sixth grade's about 12, 13, depending you on your sure? birthday. Yeah, yeah, sixth grade. You're about sixth 12 grade. or 13 years old. Depending on your birthday, that's, though. Hey, I, that's hey, that's prime time right there, though. Yeah, man. For Seattle, for for me, yeah. it was prime time. Yeah, you know, yeah. I went to Washington Middle School, man, in sixth oh, grade. Oh, the Gangster Factory. Yeah, man. <laughs> one of them. One, one of them. them. <laughs> I remember, yeah, you man. know, one of them, man. You know what I'm saying? But that was a walking distance from my house, so dig it. Washington Middle School was half a block away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So, so, so you what? So you did go to school? You did go to school? Oh, guarantee. Went okay, to school. yeah. I mean. I, that was still a that was, yeah. that was like a thing like so you know you I mean your family wasn't 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 crazy like they nah, was like no nah. you had to go to school yeah I got my ass whipped if I didn't go to school I had Dig to it. fight uncles and aunties and grandpas and, oh, okay. and everybody so yeah I went to All school right. yeah, yeah I might not have been the goodest kid right but definitely went oh shit who yeah. was who yeah. was yeah. <laughs> so you know so uh so were you being kind of sneaky like going downtown and hanging out guarantee. And stuff? 
Hell well, yeah. But yeah. yeah. so I mean, like, you, okay, you said you had, you know, your your family was entrepreneurial, and uh, and uh, you know, at the same uh, right, um, hustlers. You know what I'm saying? But what really influenced you to like even uh, t- take that turn and, and and be curious about you know uh, hanging out like that? Uh, probably um, because when I walked outside, it was everywhere. It was just everywhere. It was everywhere. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Grew up in the heart of the CD, you mm-hmm. know, had family that, you know, was in the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't shake it. Right. You know, it was always an opportunity to see what the other side of the game brought. And it was always in and out the front door. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I grew up in that era where motherfuckers hustled, motherfuckers worked. Yeah. Motherfuckers didn't do shit at all. Right, right. Motherfuckers owned businesses. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Yes. So it was kind of like walking in and out my grandfather and grandmother's house mm-hmm. was every walk of life you know so to say man it's it's, you know it's it's a blessing to have your whole family you know i'm saying um in in the same city even maybe even the same neighborhood for such a long time like the way i grew up like you know my my extended family was like in portland and then you know my dad's side was in alabama i still had a lot of family here but um and actually, my my dad family was in the CD around the same time. Oh, probably your, your family was actually, yeah, yeah. but um, is you know to have all those people around you and see so many different uh uh, uh, uh walks of life within your family, mm-hmm. bum, from bums to to ballers. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah. All, you know, I mean, a square to you know not legit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, now what was your 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 very first experience where you was like, okay? Uh, I'm I'm like I'm in the middle of it. Like I'm in the like I'm in the game. Like what was your what was that first experience for you when you um, was like I'm actually here? Probably I found one of my relatives crack sacks in the house. Word. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> I'm just being real. What? Probably uh, I probably I, I think I probably found one of my uncles or cousins or something sack. Yeah. yeah. They probably dropped it on some you know missing type that's, shit. That's heavy. I yeah. knew what it was because, like I said, I'm familiar with the streets. Right, right. So, so you already knew what it was. I'm like, damn, this nigga didn't drop some some work. You <laughs> feel me? Damn, nigga, I'm about to get out here what by you? Parnell's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm about to get out here and move around and see see what happens. Wait a minute. So you, you so you found a sack and you just commenced to jugging like as soon as you uh, as soon as you uh, you found it's it. Just you know, it's just a transition. You it, just knew what to do. I just knew what to do. So after school, that's game. You know, I would uh, move around with the homie Tony Eastland, rest in peace. Uh huh. And uh, we was already hustling young, mm-hmm. just odds and ends and little bullshit. Right, right. And uh, already knew where to go. Mm-hmm. You know, Yesler, you know, Dearborn, you know what I'm saying? Right. Anywhere up 23rd. Right. Like Garfield, Cherry, Madison. Right. I already knew downtown. I already knew where to go. So I had right. options on how to do what I needed to do. I just had to get there. Right. I mean, it wasn't even like you was an unfamiliar face. It was just like, I mean, nobody was even going to bother you because you've already been around. Yeah, I, I, I've been around, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't wow. necessarily, I wasn't fearful of nothing when it comes to getting no money. Dig it. You know, I just had to make sure that I didn't get caught by my family. Of course. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, so what, so... This might sound kind of crazy, but w- 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 was it scary when you when you like when you knew what you had and you knew what you was doing? Was it scary or did it come natural? No, it was I, it was a, it was a piece of fear. Uh huh. You know, the street with, is scary. Yeah, of course. Especially Anybody that try to act like you know what I'm saying it's just uh, super brave, hard off the right. porch. Right. I mean, you have those fears of anything can occur. Right, you get what right. I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, of course. You know, it was, in a sense, the transactional aspect was scary because it's like, you know, a nigga can give you this and then you don't give me nothing in return because you think I'm a kid. Right. So now you're trying to get me, you're trying to rob me, or you might give me some fake money. Fake money been circling around forever. So Right, or maybe no money. Or maybe no money. You see what I'm saying? Did you experience anything? Yeah, like- hell yeah. I didn't have smokers try to, you know what I'm saying, pull up in a car ooh, and, uh, ooh, you know what I'm saying? In a car, yeah. and all snatching. Yeah, and I didn't have to rock. Grab. And I had the rocks in my hand to yeah. show them, and they slapped my Pop, hand, yeah. and the rocks, and they smashed out. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's, ooh, that's cool. Now, uh, man, well, I guess without giving up too much, like, 
Like, I mean, like, was like, I mean, was, did you retaliate or did you just, I mean, you or did know, you just learn from it and keep it I, moving? I learned from it, but when I came across the motherfucker that I knew that he played some funny shit, <laughs> yeah. you know, I tried my best to get back at him. Dig that. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if it's throwing a rock, a bottle. You had to. Uh, stealing on you. You know, me and the homies jumping the smoker, whatever yes, had sir. to happen. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, then your reputation ain't no good if you ain't doing nothing about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, so. A uh, 13 year old uh, young T Hill, you out here for a minute, you know what I'm saying? Did 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 your hustle ever um, evolve into anything bigger or uh, uh, anything like something different, or was it just? I mean, like just jugging. Like, I mean, did you ever take another lane? Um, I mean, did you know? Well. It transitioned into juvenile hall. Oh, okay. So you wound up going to jail yeah, I early, catching the case and shit on How Cherry. Early when you went to jail uh, first, I was probably like fifteen or sixteen. Okay, so a couple years. You had a couple years on. I you, I had though. a couple year run of doing my thing. And, okay, you know, feeling myself and mm -hmm. you know, and, and having a couple things. Ah, then you, you got know? sat down. And then I caught a case on Cherry. Mm -hmm. You know, the undercovers hit me with the uh, mark money. You know oh what word! Saying? Yeah, they got we, me on cherry we, in the hood. I apologize for cutting you off, but just just so just so we're it's fresh in our memory. Could you explain like that whole situation? So I was I was in the hood. I was on cherry, mm -hmm. and a black smoker was like, you know, whatever his little signal was to mm -hmm. show that he wanted some dope, right? Yeah, for sure. So in that process, I went up to you know make the transaction and shit, mm -hmm. and then made the move. Mm -hmm. He gave me the money. Which was balled up, right? And while he walked off, he did some weird shit, like took his hat off. That was the signal for the police to rush from all angles. Next thing you know, I'm running. I threw my pistol on top of Jordan's. Oh, you was down there on Cherry. Yeah, I was on Cherry. Yeah, you know, for people that didn't know, Jordan's was the old school black, you know, yeah, little sure. mom and pop and, store. Yeah, and that. pharmacy. Yeah, and yeah. pharmacy. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, and uh, they come rushing from all motherfucking angles, tackle mm -hmm. me, rough me up. Come to find out that money that he gave me was mark money. They had photocopied it on paper, so when they caught whoever they caught with it, they could match they it up with the They could match it exactly. Yeah, and that's how it wasn't even no question that I, I you know, sold to the undercover. Um, just for the sake of game, uh, at that particular time, if you can remember, was there anything different uh, about that situation that you look back and be like, I should have known? Yeah, this, it was it was a too clean smoker. Ah, like he had the look, but yeah. when I got up close to him, he looked too clean. Too clean. Brand new jacket, but right. it looked bummy, but it, you could tell it was brand new. Right. And then the beanie wasn't dirty or scruffy, it was just rolled up. Right. So he had the appearance to be like he was homeless or he was down on his right. luck. Right. But really the motherfucker was wearing brand new clothes from Nordstrom's. <sighs> Now, <laughs> now, when you look back, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> and so, and you noticed that though, but you didn't notice. But but then that that uh, that that mindset of uh, that mindset, sorry, of uh, well, I'm getting the money. You just kind of overrode. You did, you kind of ignored the red flags, right? Yeah, yeah, greed. You know, um, selfishness. Yeah, wanting to make the jug or right. You know, make the transaction before the homies or whoever yeah. was with me that had mm -hmm. the opportunity to do the same. Mm -hmm. It could have been any one of us though, because I was with one of the homies. I ain't right. gonna say his name. He was there though. Yeah, you, you just step up and yeah, yeah. One, one of y'all gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. you know, it happened how it happened. You know what I'm saying? Wow, that yeah. man, that's deep. Uh, I mean, like, cause I, you know, I've, I know some homies who, who got caught, and it's like it's the it's the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Like now, um, so after that. Uh, you so you, you you get caught up a little bit. You have to go to juvenile. Yeah, was that now? Did you go to was that the the uh, the joint right there? Um, at the end of uh, I mean, in the valley over there, not the valley, but uh, the the uh, Alder. Uh, Alder. Alder. Yeah, that, Alder. That, you went to that place. Yeah, the juvenile. Okay. Hall. All right. Yep. So how long was mm -hmm. you in in there? Uh, shit. I was up in the juvenile hall for I don't know a couple of months. However long it took for them to. Filed a case and shit. Right. Because there was two cases in one. Right. So I caught a VUFA, which is a pistol charge, Ooh. and I caught a Vasca, which is a dope charge, right. delivery. Right. So I got like, in juvenile, they give you weeks, so I got like a hundred and some weeks. Right. Which is equals to two years, uh, uh, you know, because 52 weeks is a year. So it was like gotcha. probably short of two years or some shit. Okay. Yeah. So so um, what was your experience uh, in, in, in juvenile? Like, I mean, was it hard for you or like... Was it a wake up call? Like what? What was it like in there? Um, it was both. As, as a kid, it was both. Uh huh. 
you know, it wasn't too hard because unfortunately I had homies in there already. Yeah. I knew people. Right. So it you, was like you kicked it a little bit. It was like uh high school or middle school for the hard heads. Right, right. Because you know, you knew a little bit of everybody in there that was from your city because mm -hmm. you ran across them at some point in school or right. just in the streets and shit. So, mm -hmm. you know, I got to reunite with them cats, but at the same time, you know, the reality of I can't go home, I can't do what I got to do, right? You know, to uh, be with my family or to, you know, say, provide or whatever the fuck I was doing right, at a right. young age, though. You dig what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, you're young. So yeah. now, did you learn anything in there, good or bad? Uh yeah, I learned a whole lot in jail. What did you, you learn? You know what I'm saying? I learned uh who's real, who's fake. Okay. And that goes with motherfuckers in jail, that goes with family, friends, bitches. Adults. You know, adults, yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. Um I got to uh for some reason this might sound weird, but I I I, I kinda uh embraced the newfound love for reading and shit. Mm. Because you, you know, you, dope. yeah, because you get a lot of isolation time by yourself in the room. So yeah, I learned gonna, to yeah. read and shit. So mm -hmm. I started reading Donald Goins books. And, oh, word. Yeah, I got hip to the Donald Goins and the mm -hmm. Iceberg Slim shit. Yeah, and that's, that's where, you know, I started to foster a little bit of the ism <laughs> and the game and the player and the Dig Mac it. ways that I have today. But yes, sir. I still learned and embraced just studying, reading and shit, yeah, you know, yeah. juvenile, yeah. Okay. Now, okay. So, um, so it sounds like you pipped on. I mean, I, <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> it sounds like you picked up. <laughs> on, no, on, on some on some game, like on, on some some real, uh, you know. I mean, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, you know, some 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 play aways. You know, what I'm saying a little bit of pimping. I mean, but really, um, just navigating through uh, the mentality of certain of certain people. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Just being able to, you know. Uh, learn body language, mm -hmm. uh, you know, aggression. Yes. Um, reading know, people. Reading people. Yeah. You know, uh, who's who. Uh, learning that in prison, everything's racial. In jail, in juvenile, prison, it doesn't matter. Everything's mm -hmm. racial in a sense, you know. You might have your gangs and shit amongst the blacks, but, you know, mm -hmm. you have your racial, you know, tensions, and it's just Mexicans. It's all whites. It's blacks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you get to get an understanding on, like, damn, I didn't know it was like this. Right. You know, it's real racially, you know, tense in, in, in jail, you know, formats in prison Dig and juvenile it. and shit. Yeah. Now, because that's, that's survival, you know? Oh, so so a, so a system starts to break down in, in, uh, yeah. in juvenile. Mm -hmm. So and you have to, you, you basically have to get down, you know, one way or another, right? Guarantee. Guarantee. Was that hard for you? No, not necessarily. It wasn't hard. I oh, because you had your homies. Well, I had my homies, and uh -huh. I just came up in the street. So I just knew at some point, you know, you got to handle your business. Okay. You know, and if you don't, you know, what they call in jail, you either go to PC or you get checked in, uh -huh. and you, you ruin your name. Right. And then ruining your name can ruin the rest of your life. Word. Because if you go into prison or uh -huh. jail or juvenile, uh -huh. and you scared to fight or you snitch on somebody right. or you afraid to do this, that, or the third, right. then you can ruin your name because now he's in PC. Wow. You know, he's in that's protective custody for people that don't know. Got you. You dig what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So now you're in you're ostracized from yeah. the main line, which is general population, uh -huh. which is the real ones right. who are stand up and they're gonna deal with whatever problem, whether win or lose. It's just about heart. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So and then and you're also ruined outside because even if you get out and nobody's fucking with you and you, you got a jacket. Yeah, you got a jacket. Ooh. You got a jacket. Dig and it. you know, you could have just went in there and fought the nigga and you never know. You could have yeah. knocked him out, beat him up, you or could've. just Oh, man to man. It's just about heart. It ain't even about winning or losing. It's about right. heart at the end of the day. Right. Like, I mean, like, because I, you know, I remember, like, being young and, um, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying because you, you make that decision and it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a split decision. Um, and, and it's like either, you know, fight or flight, basically. Fight or flight. Fight like, or flight. I mean, that's a natural thing, yeah. but, but, <laughs> and you got to pick fight. You, you don't, you don't pick flight. You can't. Not in that situation. <laughs> Not, you yeah, you can't. Yeah, there's, but, but like, but when you're under pressure and they see, that, everybody sees that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Now Every, he, yeah. he's a sucker. Yeah. He's a bitch. Yeah. He ain't no good. When we see him, we getting on him. We taking his shit, you know, and then it translates to the streets because mm -hmm. if you're from a neighborhood or if you uh, mixed in or, you know, fucking with a group or mm -hmm. people, South End CD, Highway, West Seattle, wherever you're from in Seattle, yeah. that follows you. Like, you know, Dig your it. nigga ain't no good. This nigga right. ran in the ride. He ran That's from the right. fade. He did yeah. that, you know. So it's yeah, that just, follows you everywhere. Oh, it does. It's just how it is, bro. Now, uh, 
so you was in there. You said for about a couple years. You say not yet, a little short of two years. A little short of two years. Yeah, so then you're yeah. knocking on eighteen, right? I'm knocking 17? on seventeen. Yeah, like seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. I think I did get out around seventeen and a half. A couple, okay. couple, couple months or weeks before eighteen. Before eighteen, yeah. so, and, that, and that's prime time. You know, you're older to, uh, old enough to do a few things. But yeah. um, so now, uh, what what's what's life like after juvenile? On the street, or just let's just say on the outside. But what 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 were, what what you, what were you gonna do? I mean, you know me. I'm a forward thinker. Uh-huh. You know, I believe in you know manifestation and progress for sure. And I always been like that. That's probably what made me be curious about getting into the streets, the game, and hustling in the first place. Yeah. No matter if I found that crack sack, like I said, from right. whoever dropped it in the house. Yes, I was about my business. I just realized that was me and my character and who I was. So mm-hmm. I got so it. you. So I apologize for cutting you off, but do you feel like you knew yourself a little bit more by then? Oh yeah, okay. of course, yeah. Because okay. in in jail, like I said, you have a lot of self reflection, yeah. and introspection time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Dig so it. you either honing your skills, mm-hmm. or you know you really saying and reflecting on I don't want to do this no more, mm-hmm. or I want to do this better. Okay, so let's so just be straight up with me. Was you like I don't want to do this no more? He's like I'm gonna do this better. Nah, I said I'm about to get my money. Uh, yeah, so you so you said I'm gonna do this better. Yeah, I'm gonna do this better, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do it an updated version. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You now, know what I'm um, so after after uh, being in there and um and uh being exposed to some of the literature that you was uh partaking into, mm-hmm. um, how did that apply to your life uh, after you got out of uh, juvenile? Uh, I think it applied just self confidence, just you know. Okay, that's the, that's the, that that's the that's the uh, politically correct answer. Now you was you was reading Donald Goings and Iceberg Slim. How did that apply? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Well, How did that apply to to seventy year old T. Hill? Well, you know, this is the thing. I was reading Donald Goings and Iceberg Slim, but uh-huh. I also was reading you know business shit okay uh, okay got you personal development mm-hmm. you know i was reading some bullshit too I like okay. uh sydney shelton you know i was reading well, I, some I, different i'm things. not familiar with that he's one. a black author that was, 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 was popular around there okay i was into poetry maya angelo mm-hmm. and just different poetic forms because i used to rap but not serious but then i realized that writing music is a sense of poetry as well right, so right. i did a lot of poetry and shit mm-hmm. and the little bitches that i did have in my life that was writing me or coming to visit mm-hmm. And shit, you know what I'm saying? I would write them poems and right. pop that shit on For that sure. level. You know what I'm saying? So you, man, you you was kind of a dangerous dude, man, at, at a 17, 18. I mean, you know, shit, you grow up in the street, you grow up a little bit faster than, Dig you know, it. the yeah. average, you know, that staying in school mm-hmm. and can't come out after dark and mm-hmm. got to come in before the lights go off. And, yes. You know, and mom All and that. daddy got GPS on their ass because, yeah. you know. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Now, um, so li- life skipping along, right? 18, 21, 25. What, 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 what's going on around then? Shit. Oh, go back. We'll go okay. back. 21 years old. 21, okay. Caught an attempted murder charge. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Attempted murder. Attempted murder charge. Can you tell me about that situation? I can go a little bit into it. Okay. I got this, into it with a close relative of mine. I dig it. And uh, one thing led to another, and I popped him. Oh shit! Yeah, a couple times. So for real, for real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was you intended. Well, I can't say that. No, nah, okay. it's just is what it is. Okay, it, it happened it is. how it happened. For shit. sure. It, mean, yeah, you know, you're right about that. It happened how it happened. It's, yeah. it's behind me, so it Dig ain't. It. You know what I'm saying? No other shit. But you know. Now, um, whoa, that's deep, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah, I, it's I real honestly life, bro. didn't. I it's didn't know life. that. Yeah, you know this. <laughs> now we, we, we unveiling the game through sixty five. <laughs> for decision, real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Now that uh, you said twenty one, right? Oh man, twenty one. That was prime time again. Prime time, man. Like Dion. Yeah. So you and then, so you had to go away. Had to go away. How long did you go away for? They gave me one hundred seventy five months. Man, okay, you talking? I, I, look, yeah. I don't want to do math. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh three. Is that uh that's one hundred seventy five? That's about three. That's, that's more than three months. I mean, years. three years. That's then there fifteen years. But I didn't oh, do the I'm whole thinking fifteen. Weeks. Oh, I'm tripping. See, that's why you don't give me math. What, yeah. Say it again. It's, it was uh, how many? One hundred seventy five months. No. Oh, yeah, I know. So I got one hundred and twenty <laughs> months. How many years? That's I did. Damn near eleven or twelve. But what that is is that I got 
the time for the attempted murder, yeah. and then they give you the gun enhancement time. So you get gun you get you get good time. You get time cut off the original sentence, but when it comes uh-huh. to gun enhancement, you got to do day for day. Damn near gun, like you in the feds. Can you explain gun enhancement? To A me? gun enhancement is like any crime that is weapon. They have weapon enhancement and gun enhancement. So weapon enhancement is any crime that they deem was used in the commission of a crime, a serious crime, knife, baseball bat, whatever uh-huh. the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Then you have a gun enhancement, which uh-huh. was any crime serious that, you know, was revolved around a gun. Ooh. So they can give you 100% of that time. So say if they give you 60 months gun enhancement, uh-huh. you got to do 60 months flat. You don't get no time off that. Oh, I see. So I had to do that five years flat. Then I got time off the 10. So that's what rounded it down to. That's I didn't have to do 15, like though. Good, you know what I'm saying? What they call it good behavior and stuff like I, well, that? Well, it depends. Like, and shit, I was okay. getting in riots and shit. I got. Oh, okay. So I you, got, yeah, you weren't an angel. A whole lot of shit. Nah, fuck okay. no. Uh, yeah. Nah. So, I mean, you, you just, I mean, you're doing your time, but you, I mean, you're surviving. Like, you just, you're just doing your thing. Real talk. I got sent to uh, uh, Minnesota, I mean, Arizona for five years as soon as I got locked up. Why? Because <laughs> I was I was deemed me hello to homies hello uh-huh. niggas in Washington from Seattle to Tacoma uh-huh. Yakima all over Washington State at the time uh-huh. we were deemed the worst in the system who had hella time so they gave us what they call out of state screening so what that meant wow. was they sent us from Washington to Arizona uh-huh. Oklahoma uh-huh. Colorado Vegas and Minnesota damn yep. So you, you did, so you did time in Arizona. I did time in Arizona. I did four and a half in Arizona, uh-huh. and I did eleven months in Minnesota. Oh, you had to, okay. Why, why, why did you move to Minnesota? Because when they shut down the prison, it was a uh-huh. private prison. Okay, we were. It was like oh, federal. It, it was like, state, but federal in a sense because motherfuckers okay. was there from Cali to Feds. It was uh-huh. all type of weird shit going right, on. Right, right. And um, they was closing that prison down because uh-huh. they were bringing in more Alaskan motherfuckers that was locked up okay. and more California niggas that was locked up. Mm-hmm. So they sent the rest of us from Washington. They sent us to um, Minnesota. 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 And Oklahoma. And Oklahoma. Yeah. Like, that's just, yeah, that's some random ass shit. Yeah, that shit, shit was but, weird, bro. I ain't going to lie. That now, was some weird shit. Just, just, just a little bit of insight on that, like um, you know, going to a different place, all kind of different people from everywhere. This ain't this ain't juvenile and the homies from middle school. Nah, this, this is, is prison. Killers, you know, what I'm saying whatever you might have, right? Yeah, facts. What was it like? Uh, I mean, what was that experience like? I mean, in general, like what? I, I mean, mean, it wasn't. I mean, to me, it was. It wasn't too bad. I mean, I'm locked up. Obviously, it's fucked yeah, up. Yeah. But it wasn't like scary or nothing because right. I'm already in the thick of things and yeah. I got homies and I got niggas that I'm fucking right. with, running with, and yeah. we coming together at, you know, on so one you, accord. So you was kind of plugged in. Then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, plugged so you, in. Were, yeah, you was, you was, yeah. you was higher on the totem pole. I yeah. mean, no, nah, I was plugged in. However you want to look at it, I'm right. plugged in. It's just, it's just how it go. Dig you it. Go, one thing unfortunate about being locked up, uh-huh. unfortunately, you're going to know somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, you know, it's just. And, and fortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. Exactly. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's just, you know, I just knew a lot of niggas and, okay. and, and did time in juvenile. So, I knew niggas from all around Tacoma, Dig it. Yakima, motherfucking everywhere. You feel me? Everett, all yeah. type of shit. You wow. Know? Man, I look. Yeah, this, I mean, man, you, yeah, you kind of tripping me out a little bit. So, yeah, bro, it's real life, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's real life. Story. It's yeah. my story, though. You man, know what I'm saying? I, man, I dig it. Yeah. So, okay, so, uh, so Arizona, Minnesota, um, 12 years, you say? Uh, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Roughly, roughly yeah, yeah, 12 yeah. years. So, man, so that's like uh, uh, 30 years old? I got out 18? at, yeah, yeah, yeah. About about 30 years old. 30, 30 so I got out like 30-something. 30 yeah, 30, 31, I got out like 2018. 2018. So I got out, yeah, 30-something okay. years old, whatever the case may be. You yeah. know, even though I look 23, 24, but you know. Now, okay, so what, what did you... What what did you learn on that uh, stay in uh, locked up? Like, what did you did you did you did you evolve? Like, did you learn anything else, or was it just kind of like doing my time and I'm out of here? Yeah, well, you know what I overall what I learned in that sentence and that ride that I took, you mm-hmm. know, all those years and shit, I uh, turned in the pistol for the briefcase. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, did that? Yeah, yeah. I turned yeah, in sure. my pistol and 
and you know, in exchange for a briefcase, man, and I'm saying business, you know, entrepreneurship and, mm -hmm. you know, utilizing intelligence and game and, you know, learning how to get the results off game, not mm -hmm. off, you know what I'm saying, strong arm or strong not arm. selling right. drugs. Right, or, right, right. You know, not off thugging mm -hmm. on some real boss shit. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of learned, I got my degree in business. Mm -hmm. You know, got a Did you? yeah, supervisory in, in, management. In, in jail. Prison? Yeah, they pay for the free. Bill Gates' sister, yeah. Bill Gates' sister has a program where she allotted how much ever money mm -hmm. and through Walla Walla Community College mm -hmm. and free college courses and credits and all that shit. Word. Yeah, so I got my degree. I, didn't even know about I ended that. up getting my shit through Clark College in Vancouver, but I okay. got majority of my uh credits and shit that were transferable, got them for um got them from uh Walla Walla Community College. Wow. Yeah. Shout out Bill Gates' sister too, man. Hey. That program. Yeah. That, man, that's <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's dope. Now, so, okay, you got a you, so you have a business degree. So you you hit the street with education. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, mm -hmm. Now was this was this the birth of a game 365? Game 365 to rewind back a little bit. Okay, was created when I was locked up in Arizona. When, when you were okay, so this this happened in Arizona. Now 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 yeah now now uh, explain that one. Go from the beginning on that one because. Game 365, I mean, anybody can say, oh, it's because, they're, you know, it's one year and it's game and shit. But yeah, it's got, nah, I know nah, it's deeper nah, than that. Nah, so nah. so, so what, what's that about? Nah, Game 365, man, has a whole history, background, yeah. understanding, meaning, and everything to it. So Let's get into long it. Long story short, I was locked up in Arizona. Dig it. I was walking around the yard. Mm -hmm. Shout out to homie M. We was walking around the yard, mm -hmm. and at this time, you know, we all the way away from Seattle, Washington prisons and shit, and, you know, niggas was acting funny on the street, and mm -hmm. wasn't too many family tapped in, and mm -hmm. bitches was, you know, fly by night. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what I'm going to do, dog? I said, I'm going to have everybody in the family put a pickle jar in the kitchen mm -hmm. and put a picture of me taped to it, and I'm going to say, I'm going to put feed the game on, on it. <laughs> <laughs> the game, nigga. Who the <laughs> fuck? Who the fuck is gonna walk past a jar that say that on it? You feel me? And they got my picture, and I'm locked up. Feed the game. Yeah, yeah. Right now. Feed the game. Right you now. Know? And for the niggas that try to steal my idea, nigga, you know where it came from. Real talk. Yeah, because they got some niggas that try to steal the feed the game, you know, idea and shit. But that was gonna be. <laughs> listen, That's dope. Listen, though, bro. That. Feed the game was mm -hmm. my nonprofit because you get it nonprofit giving back. Oh, so you established a, a 501c3. I the idea of it that okay. was the seed. Okay. And it started out by putting the pickle jar in everybody's house with a picture that said feed the game. Dig it. So that was the 501c3 that was without the official paperwork. Okay, gotcha. I was starting out trying to get, you know yeah. what I'm saying, donations and shit. Right. But you know, the, yeah, I mean your heart was in the right the place. The ghetto way. So, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, you, yeah, you <laughs> did you did what you did. You, yeah, yeah, that's what you had to do. Guarantee. So yeah, for sure. Speed up mm -hmm. years later. Mm -hmm. I'm at camp on my way to transition back to the streets. Okay, and I'm like I said, I'm going to this business course, mm -hmm. supervisory management, and I'm doing this class. And the teacher was like, you know, in order for you guys to graduate, you guys got to put a business plan together. Right. right. So that's where the birth of Game Three Sixty Five come from. Right. So you, so you, you, so you. That was a qualification. So you had to do that. That was mandatory qualification to graduate the class. Okay. And I always had the game in me. I always had the game. You know what I'm saying? In my mind, I always mm -hmm. had the game as far as feet the game go. Mm -hmm. So I took off feet the, and I had game G A M E. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm gonna do with this? How am I gonna put this into a for profit mm -hmm. business that you know what I'm saying transition to an LLC when I touch down? Man, and so I apologize for cutting you off, but so really, all you had was just a name. All I had was a name and some game. Yeah. <laughs> Real talk. I mean, you got to start somewhere. You feel me? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah bro. And um, I'm in the room. I'm in the room because uh -huh. on days that I'm not going to school, and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to? What are you going to do? How am I going to create this business for this business plan? Because right. I want it to be something that ain't nobody in the class doing. It's something that I'm actually going to transition into the streets and do mm -hmm. and bring to life and manifest. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, fuck, man. Uh, and one day I just said, oh, I got it. Yeah. I said, game stands for growth, ambition, motivation, excellence. Dope. The 365 is every day in every way. Mm -hmm. Because I'm pushing this game 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. Ain't no days off. No days. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, so that's I where do. the game and the 365 merged together as one. Right. And then I made it an LLC when I touched down. Dig that. Yeah. So 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 you touch down. So you got a game to six, uh, 365 is a is a is a is a LLC. LLC, yeah. <clears throat> now um 
where did the uh the the idea for um you know the 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 logo the merchandise and, and shit yeah the merchandise come from um the idea for the merchandise just came from like you know ideas getting logos made yeah you know just playing with it so this is the end result this is the transition to the streets the first idea yeah I was partnered at the time. I had my partner that believed in the dream. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, shout out Talon, my nigga T-Folks. Oh, for sure. He was a part of this shit. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. brought the idea. It's my original idea, mm -hmm. but I brought him in. Bros, he was good. You know, Dang my it. partner of mine and shit, mm -hmm. loyal mm -hmm. and shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So I was like, bro, come on. You know, he's from Tacoma. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? We're going to do this shit I-5. I'm going to bring you in. This is how we're going to do it. Dang so it. we brainstormed and boom, came up with some ideas. I mm -hmm. got some logos made. Got some clothes printed. Right. You know, $1,500. Got the winter collection and shit, Word. and bubbled up from there just with the branding, the idea, right. the consistency, the love from the community, the support. You know, on social media, shout out to everybody who supported Game Three Sixty Five, who wanted to see us win, prosper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We about we in like eight nine states mm -hmm. as far as merchandise, sending it in the mail, and just man, going you guys hit the shit. ground running. Like you, yeah. Like what, yeah. what year was that about? This that was in 2018. 2018. So yeah, okay. You know, you, oh, the same the same year you got out. Yeah, July 2018 okay, so was you, when. Oh, you was okay. You was on yeah, it. You didn't yeah. you didn't sit down or nothing. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, you was nah. like, oh uh, yeah, we got we need to get moving. Dig that. Yeah, because when it's in you, not on you, you got to manifest this Ooh, shit, bro. Can you please repeat that? Please? When it's in you and not on you, you got to <laughs> manifest it. It's gonna come. Yes, sir. It's gonna come out the pores anyway because this is who yes, you are. It's sir. not you know, ain't wearing a t shirt. This yeah. is part of who you are inside. Real. So tough. I didn't have no choice but to bring it to life. Right. Right, right. I mean, because because would you say like uh, w uh, back in uh, 2018 when you got out, you know, the odds were against you a little bit. You know, you um, you were a felon, right? Guarantee. Um, you couldn't you couldn't uh, move the way, uh, well, the square way. You know, what I'm saying for lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you couldn't you, you know you couldn't just go out and you, you could go get a job maybe, but it wasn't what you wanted. It wasn't what you wanted. Nah, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, it wasn't what I wanted, but I had to. I was in work release. Oh, so you did have to do a little oh, bit of that. Oh, hell yeah. I worked for, yeah. I worked for <clears> uh, uh, Blazing Bagels in Redmond. Oh, word. Yeah, I had no choice because in work release. Yeah, I heard have, about that place. Yeah, you get a job or go back to prison. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, so A or B. Yeah, We're picking yeah. A. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So in work release, mm -hmm. that's a part of the thing. Mm -hmm. You're out here to work. Right. But you have to pay rent. Yeah, uh, to to the uh, work release. Halfway? Oh, yeah, I was in a. I ain't gonna even get in. No yeah, love. you don't, I don't have give to. A fuck about you no don't work have release, to. But yeah. I was in a work release in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, uh, had to pay like twelve dollars a day. Oh, up, okay, I see. It, I it see. added up to like four something a month type shit. Let me let me ask you on a side on a side note. Do, does uh, little stuff like that, um, paying rent and having to work a job while, right after you get out of prison, does that establish any kind of structure for you? Does it, does it help? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because now it's grown man business time. You real talk. Yeah. 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 yeah, facts. yeah, yeah. Twelve, twelve or twelve hundred. You got to pay it every it every week, you're every hope. every day, every every yeah, month. Whatever accountable. the case may be, it's a responsibility. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, um, so you did that for a while, but at the same time, you're, you're working on a, a game three sixty five, and you, you know, you uh, you fulfilling all your obligations um, uh, from after being out of getting mm -hmm. out of prison. Yeah. Now, um, when you got uh, off paper and you didn't have to do any, any of that no more, was it just like full steam ahead, like? Like let's go, like just I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was I was full steam ahead behind from the, the gates, scenes, from the, the gates, scenes. right? Okay, but I was on probation now. Okay, so, so so were you not allowed to do that, or did you you were just no, no, kind of no, no, laying no, low? No, you could do you could do you know what I'm saying oh, okay. the things that you can do within the fact of you know or the the scope of whatever your probation officer is pushing. Okay, the line yeah. they're pushing. Right, right. But you know that's a legitimate business. So I mean, yeah. you know, and if, you were you were and. They were cool with that. You could do that. Yeah. Hell okay. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Okay. 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 So 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 we're off and running. Three uh, game three sixty five. Um. Uh. What t shirts hats. Like yeah. just just all of it. T shirts hats. I think I see some sweatsuits out there that were popping, man. Yeah. Like sweatsuits, hoodies. Yeah. Kids clothes, women's clothes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Man, you said mm -hmm. you, you said 2018. 2018. Now I met you like when I met you, 
I think I met you in 2018. I think so too, bro. 2018 or 2019 at the at the, the pop up in the in the one lady's backyard, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like 20. You was like fresh out, fresh out, man. I just Dang. wear this. I just wear this shit well, man. You never know, man. You no, no, yeah. I, <laughs> no, <laughs> look. Let me tell you. No, <laughs> yeah, you funny, <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> like, like when when I when I met you, you know, I was. I, I mean, it looked like I was like this man has been doing this for years. And by the way, um, you sold me a, a shirt, um, which is now one of my fat guy gold shirts, but. <laughs> Cause I, cause I, I could, I could rock it with a jacket if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the yeah. summer wasn't having it. Yeah. But, uh, but you know what? I ain't seen nobody else with that shirt, and, and I know you don't make it anymore. But it's the lady on the the, the salt the salt box. Oh, it's, it's baby blue. That was our best seller. Sprinkle me yeah. with game. Sprinkle me with game. Not, not salt. Yeah, not salt. Yeah. I, I still have it. Um, and I, I could I could I could get into it if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you sneak but into it. Like. I love that shirt. I I I wore it once <laughs> with a jacket like a couple years ago. But yeah. uh, but I love that shirt. By Appreciate the way. That. Appreciate but, that. But uh, but yeah, no. So 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 when I met you at that pop up, you know, yeah, you looked like you uh, have been doing it for a while. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, and that's dope in itself. Now, um, let me ask you this: What is the 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 goal for Game Three Sixty Five? Well, the goal for Game 365, bro, is for us to be a progressive company. Okay. You know, we're not no one-trick pony. Mm -hmm. Because just like I said, 365, I believe in 365 business ideas. Dig it. I mean, if peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is popping them all. Real talk. And I can make a million off buying them for $30, but I can sell yes, them for sir. $100. Yes, sir. Then we selling peanut butter and jelly tomorrow. Okay. It'll just have a Game 365 brand. All right. So, you know, the ultimate goal is to, you know what I'm saying, to be – in the real estate mm -hmm. and to and be investing, yes, you know whether it's in the market, yes. whether it's you know saying like I said, real estate mm -hmm. to upgrade the pro the the the, the clothing line, mm -hmm. um, to put this podcast, yeah, you know what I'm saying on a major level, competing with a million dollars worth of game, For and sure. the, the 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 no jumper and all that old shit, like Everything. you know what I'm saying, we here yes. to stay, yes, we here to stay, man, you know we about our business, you know yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. And, this shit don't stop. So, you know, a motherfucker's going to be here, going to be rocking, yeah. going to be pushing and promoting mm -hmm. and bringing, you know what I'm saying, what's going on within the Northwest communities and shit mm -hmm. and bringing them to the platform that we have here. Dude. And uh, the only way is up. True that. Now, um, let me ask you, because uh, uh, now me and you, we've been working together for about, uh, about two, two, three months uh, so far um, uh, due to my illustrious uh, studio but uh Good tell me about too, <laughs> tell, 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 tell me about the the beginning of of the game 365 podcast and uh what kind of uh, uh platform uh put it this way if you had to explain three uh game 365 podcast to an alien what would you say to him uh what i would say is that this podcast is for entertainment dig it music mm -hmm. finances you know, in fashion, like, you know, we're we're not just in the lane of rap. I just have a lot of artists that do music and shit. Sure, but yeah. this is something that, you know, eventually I want everybody to embrace, be a part of. Mm -hmm. This platform is for men, women, and kids. That, yes, sir. But the key thing is you have to have something going on, though. Yeah. You know, we're not just interviewing anybody just because you want to get on the camera and talk shit. You know, this is a <laughs> program and a platform and a yeah. podcast for people that are in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Like I said, entertainment. With financial literacy, mm -hmm. you know, and in fashion, who have active businesses, opportunities, they have motion, they have things going on that the world needs to see, yes. and this is the platform for that. Nice. That was, I mean, I, yeah, of course, that's well put. Um, man, three game 365. Let me, let me ask you, uh, I got just a couple more questions for you. What's game? What is game? I believe game is uh, intelligence. Mm-hmm. You know, um, knowledge and action, wisdom, you know, understanding, being able to get the results from something that, you know, a person never thought that they would be able to manifest something or, you know, chase after something and they use intelligence and they use some of the know-how. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you just have like that charismatic, you know, saying way of going about it and you kind of, mm -hmm. not and I say finesse and not in a bad way, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to say manipulation, but you kind of use certain, some, certain ways to get your results you want. Yeah. And it's never for the negative, though. For sure. You see what I'm saying? Because motherfuckers use game and all kids use game. Of course. You know they what I'm saying? They game us every day. They game motherfuckers <laughs> every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, that's what I believe game is. You dig that. 
Well, uh, I, have to, I just have to say this, uh, kind of outside of, uh, you know, us doing this podcast, uh, I would like to let you know that um, just from what I've seen so far uh, in the short time that we've been working together, um, you're a phenomenal uh, interviewer. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, you're 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 a phenomenal a, a phenomenal uh, coordinator. Um, you've Appreciate been putting you, you put this joint together. You here? You consistent? You know you're you're always here. Of course, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, you know, you, I don't. You know, nobody has to tell you that, but I just I just wanted to be the one that uh, told you because um, it needs to be said. Appreciate it. You feel me? Um, your 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 show's great. You know what I'm saying? Um, I I. On a personal note, I attempted to do something like this, but I love the way that you're doing it, and I'm I'm here to support you 100 percent personally you, uh, as RC the Trackaholic and si- the Sideshow. But um, I was, you know, it's good that uh, people get to uh, see you on this side because mm-hmm. you're always asking about other people, but now somebody gets to ask about you. Yeah, that's just you know being humble and understanding where I come from. Dig you know it. what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, I know how to get money, and it ain't. I know how to do things to, you know, take care of myself. But, yeah. you know, this is a platform for everybody else. Mm-hmm. I'm Obviously, I'm the interviewer. I'm going to be on here. But I want everybody else that, like I said, has something going on yes. to be a part of, you know what I'm saying, this ship. Because yeah. this shit's selling around the world, man. Real talk. And, uh, with know, or without you. With or without you. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You know, so uh, this is just a part of, you know what I'm saying, something that, you know, is just the beginning. And, mm-hmm. you know, the snowball effect, you know what I'm saying, this is going to happen organically and genuinely. And mm-hmm. everybody who's meant to be on this platform is going to be on here. If you ain't Dig meant, it. you ain't meant. Dig so it. I'm not kissing nobody's ass or I'm not begging nobody to be on here. No, you're not. It, it got to be mutual. You know what I'm Real saying? Real talk. And, and, and it's business is business, so I understand that too. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Now, what's what's uh, next for in the near future? For game 365? Uh, I think just putting the systems together for this right here, bro. Uh And merging this into, you know what I'm saying, what it needs to be and the vision I have for it. Mm -hmm. And once I get that system in order and having an understanding on how I want to push it to the next level and mm-hmm. just have it to where it's just working, you know, all cylinders, you know, how it's Dig supposed it. to be. And then I can move to something else. You know, there's yeah. levels to this game, bro. Oh, so it's day. like, you know, yeah. this is this is this is level two. Yeah. You know what don't I'm saying? Stop. Yeah, yes. yeah. Don't stop, bro. Well, man. Um uh tell people where to find you ev- everywhere you at. Tell them where it is. Uh you can find me on Instagram, uh mm-hmm. Game365 LLC, Facebook Game365, YouTube Game 365 LLC, you know, personal page, Feed the Game 1, uh, website to get the clothes, Game365LLC.com. There we are, man. Dig it. Appreciate you, bro. And on that note, we're going to get up out of here. One love. Peace. Peace.